Well, welcome back, everybody. As you all know, today we are taking a look at our girl, Antagony. And while we do not often start off at the box, one little thing that I did want to go ahead and point out is that over here on the side, they have the traditional Beast Wars logo. Now, one thing I wanted to bring out is that this is probably my favorite iteration of it because that one that they had in Kingdom was very skull-like and I just didn't really care for it. And as much as I don't have anything against the Predacons of Prime, I really don't care for their logo any more than I do the Kingdom one. So anyway, it's good to see the traditional Predacon symbol being represented on our girl's box. So if you all want to jump right into the review of Antagony, I will go ahead and put the time on the screen right now. But if you do want to hear the backstory or you're curious about who Antagony is, right now we're going to go into the history of her. So again, if you don't want to listen to that part of this video, again, the time will be on the screen right now. So Antagony is actually a BotCon original character from the late 90s. And essentially in fiction, she is the herald of the Predacon Warlord Shocker Act, which we have talked about a few times on this channel. Her alongside Sandstorm and a repaint of Transmetal Cheetor named Cataclysm. Yes, I am not making this stuff up. But I mean, come on, look at our girl. Her name is Antagony, which she's an ant, which causes agony, and she loves to antagonize people. So the girl's name is Triple Weapon Wordplay, okay? However, this girl ended up on prehistoric Earth during the Beast Wars, gets captured by Megatron, who uses a mind drill, which is basically the same thing as Prime's cortical psychic patch, except just a lot more brutal. And he pushes her, finding out about where she's from, everything she went through, before ultimately frying her brain. And that's pretty much <laughs> the last we see of Antagony until she appears in other continuities. But that's a whole nother story. Which brings us to the actual figure herself. She looks pretty sick in this purple, black, and lilac, and oh yes, I am digging our girl. Which her original mold was a recolor of this guy right here. Now, there are a lot of versions of both Antagony and Inferno that, because of the plastic that was used, they are super fragile and have a tendency to break. And as you all know, she is a recolor of the legacy version of Inferno. And even though from this angle you cannot tell, she is killing it with the paint, making our boy over here look a little bit uh, bland. However, we know that our boy over here is getting his Takara repaint at some point, so who knows, he might come back and outshine her. Now what's interesting about her is, as she was basically only a BotCon comic character, the only times that we ever saw her depicted in fiction, we never saw her in beast mode. So to finally kind of see her in this beast mode, it's really just kind of cool because as I have always said, you paint a transformer black and it looks sick. And again, with those little purple and lilac highlights that she has, I think it works extremely well. Now, if you're wondering how she looks compared to one of her fellow heralds, here she is with Sandstorm, and uh, yeah, I kind of like the I like the fact that we're getting so many BotCon characters, and they're coming from such really good molds. And I say that because once you have the upgrades for this guy, he's actually a decent figure. Now, all we need to complete the trifecta is the recolor of that United Silver Bolt that's coming out, and we'll have all of the major players. So let's go ahead and let this girl transform and get into her robot mode. And so we can see our girl has finally transformed into her robot mode. But let's be honest. Because this head sculpt is what it is, basically just a reuse of Inferno, this does not look like our girl at all, especially when you compare it to the comic look. This just looks like Inferno has been listening to a little bit too much of the Rolling Stones. I see a Richter and I want it into black. And it does dawn on me that some of this audience doesn't even know who the Rolling Stones are, which at that point... I Goes. However, aside from that though, 
Is it still just as sick in robot mode? Definitely, you can tell that this girl is killing it. And overall, the Inferno mold is a very strong one, no matter which one of these characters you're using it for. For those of us that have been paying attention to the BotCon releases since the days of Beast Wars, after we got Sandstorm, we pretty much saw this figure coming a mile off. And speaking of Sandstorm here, you can see how him and Antagony look facing off. And even though we never saw something like this, because she got her brain fried before he revealed that he was an inside mole of Shockerak's organization acting as his herald, so uh, that would have been kind of cool. But the other thing is, looking at this gun, as much as I was chapped about having to use the rotor butt for Inferno before getting this third party upgrade kit, I'm not as mad about it for Antagony. Now, if we look at Antagony's art and everything, that gun that she's using is actually an acid blaster, and it looks neither anything like what she's rocking over here, nor Inferno's actual gun. However, that does tie into an issue that Inferno originally had, because before getting the upgrade kit, you could not have him doing this, while at the same time, have him doing this. Now, one of the beautiful things about that kit was it did include something else in particular for Inferno, which is this piece right here, which does not come standard on Antagony, but I think it ties in really well with her considering it's among the purple-ish lilac sort of colors, which we know this girl is rocking. So it is kind of nice to be able to have both ants use their propeller rotor butts while having their main weaponry at the same time. Now one little detail that I did want to go ahead and point out is I do like the fact that on the Kingdom Inferno they kept a lot of the detailing, even like the four like circles in like on each one of the propellers. And you can see it over here on Antagony. But the funny thing is, just like how he had the circles picked out on his propeller blades, she likewise does that. Whereas on the Kingdom Inferno, it's just all one solid color. They didn't even bother. And I'm like, well, that's kind of an interesting detail. However, it does add a little bit more uniqueness to our girl over here. However, our girl is not a one-trick pony because one thing that they found in the molding for this is a entirely different head for an entirely different character. That's right. With Antagony, you not only get her, but you get an entirely separate character simply by swapping out the head. Although different character, that may be a matter of perspective. And one head swap later, <laughs> and guess what? Our boy Scavenger lives again. And oh my gosh, this is so awesome to see. Now, quick little history lesson is that on the Fazbro, like the Transformers fan streams that they did, they, before they got word that they were gonna have to do all Transmetal figures from the ground up instead of retooling season one molds that we already have, they had already baked in a little bit of Scavenger's detail after they found the head sculpt, which I mean, you can see, this is clearly the same boy. But the chest detailing, they said they took this as, as inspiration and that's why they put it in every version of the Inferno mold, both Antagony and Inferno. And I'm like, that helps this boy all the better. Because one thing that I've always said about this mold was the fact that the ant legs were super crazy, right? Well, that's Scavenger's thing. And then, if you guys had seen on the secondary channel, we actually displayed these drills on our standard Inferno. The legs, the drills, the head, the chest, I mean, it's perfect for this boy. And I'm sorry that I'm like geeking out. I don't know why I am so excited. It's just Scavenger, I have such a history with this mold. He's one of my absolute favorite non-show characters because it was like, hey, what if Inferno was a trans metal? I am just so excited and it is just so cool to kind of see the fact that it's basically, no, it actually is a modern day legacy evolution trans metal scavenger and that is just amazing. So anyway, I do have to say I like how this version of Scavenger is rocking the sort of prime Gaia Nightmare Unicron look. 
and uh, he's pulling it off spectacularly. Now one of the things that I did want to go ahead and highlight is the head because look at that sculpt. It is just so much screaming this original boy's energy, just a little bit more refined. And if you are wondering if you want to go ahead and have Scavenger's head inside the beast mode, it does fit in there quite well. There is more than enough room to do so. However, the other thing about snapping Scavenger's head on Antagony's body is now that it does answer a question that we previously had raised in this boy's original video. If Scavenger was supposed to be kind of like a future iteration of him, did he gain his drill tank mode at the cost of his flight mode? However, do again remember what the mold that we are talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> with one of its signature features. So I think our question has definitively been answered that yes, our boy Scavenger can still fly. This feels like having your cake and eating it too, which is absolutely 100% wonderful. So you can see here all the maniac ants. I mean, I have my own colony at this point. And we're going to be adding a fifth one. And my plan is currently to get the premium finish two-pack with that version of Inferno and Air Razor, like I mentioned earlier. So probably that will be my display version of Inferno. And I might just keep it, this Inferno eventually like this with the drills and the head. That way I can still have Antagony as who she is. But I do have to admit, I don't think the head and the drills go as well with Inferno, but they don't look terrible either. And speaking of premium finishes, I'm getting some King Kong vibes. Are you guys? Oh my gosh. I think that we might just have to do this review really soon. But that's in the future. And until then, guys, I hope you enjoyed the look that we took at our version of Scavenger and Antagony. And until next time, guys, we'll see you in another review. Royalty commanded we capture the Maximals invading our colony. Will you explain our failure to him?